Now, one of the things it's important to be able to do is to critique research. Now, critique doesn't just mean criticise. Critique means to point out that which is good and that which is bad. It's making an, an evaluation of how good or bad a particular research paper is. So we need to critique research. But to do this, we have to have an idea about the research process so we can decide if the research process is good or bad. Because if the research process is bad, if it's not a logical, systematic inquiry, then the results are likely to be invalid. Whereas if the research process is a good research process, it follows good research technique and methodology, then it's more likely that the result is going to be valid. And ideally, research would start with a problem in the real world. So let's start off with that and try and sketch out some ideas now. So we'll start off with some kind of problem in the real world. So we have a problem, we've identified a problem. And we want to think what we're going to do about this. So the first thing could be to, to, to have some, some kind of idea about what we can do about the problem. You need some idea. So you can just sit there and think, well, I've got this particular problem. What am I going to do about it? Well, I wonder what would happen if I did such and such. So you have an idea of how the problem could be addressed. Now, the next thing to do, the researcher should try and firm this up into a hypothesis. This is the next stage, a hypothesis. Now, a hypothesis is a statement which is amenable to testing. A hypothesis can be tested. So, for example, if I thought um, drug X improves patient mood, that would be a statement. Now, it may or may not be true, but we could test it. I might say um, primary nursing improves patient satisfaction. Now, is that true? Well, it may or may not be true. We could test it to find out. So it's a statement which is amenable to testing. Compression therapy or compression bandaging improves healing rate in venous leg ulcers. Is that true or not? Well, we could, we could test it. So it's a statement that may or may not be true that we can test. Sometimes, though, a hypothesis is, is put the other way around. It states that there will be no difference. We call that a null hypothesis in that case. So if I were to say that this diet will have no effect uh, on weight, there will be no weight loss with this diet, then that is a prediction that nothing will happen. So a hypothesis is a prediction that something will happen. A null hypothesis is a prediction that something will not happen. So a hypothesis is a testable statement. And of course, the aim of the research project is then to test whether this hypothesis is substantiated or whether the hypothesis is refuted. So we have the hypothesis. So it's problem, idea, hypothesis. Now the next thing we need to do is carry out some sort of research study. But at the moment, we're not quite sure what methodology we're going to use. What research method could we follow that will give us the answer as to whether the hypothesis is correct or not? Well, for this, it's good to develop a research methodology on a small-scale study we call a pilot study. So a small-scale study is carried out to test, really, to test the methodology. So the next stage in a good research process is a pilot study. So we do a pilot study. Now if the real study is going to look at say a thousand patients, the pilot study might only look at 10 or 20. It's not so much to gather data, it's to see if the research methodology that we have chosen is a good research methodology to collect the kind of data we want to collect. Now you're starting to get the idea now. When you're reading or critiquing a research report, 
you want to be thinking, well, is it addressing a problem in the real world? What is the idea behind this? Is there a hypothesis? Is the hypothesis clearly stated? Do I know from the outset what this research project is attempting to test? If not, then the research is starting to become questionable. Was a pilot study carried out? Well, if there was no pilot study carried out, then possibly the research methodology is not as, is not as finely developed as we might like it to be. If we don't have a finely developed um, methodology, then the results that we get might not be as good. All these things are helping us to decide whether this is going to be a good or a bad piece of research. Because the problem is, this is the problem, there is some very good research in the literature. Absolutely first class research. But there's also a lot of research which is by no means first class. In fact, there's a lot of research around which really is pretty poor stuff. And remember, at the end of the day, we're using this research to inform our rationale, to inform our intervention. So if we're going to apply this to patients, to people's lives, this is important. This is going to change people's lives. We've got to make sure that it's right. Therefore, we need to know that it's a good research methodology. So the pilot study. And then the next thing is that the study is actually carried out and there is a collection of data. So the next thing is data collection. We actually collect the data. Lots of different ways this could be done. It could be questionnaires, it could be observation in the, in the clinical area or whatever area you're researching. It could be collection of numbers and statistics. But we collect the data. Now, what, what is data? What do we mean by this term data? Well, data to me means raw information. It could just be numbers. It could be a spreadsheet full of numbers. So data is raw information that we've collected. And when you look at data, it actually doesn't mean very much. But it's data, it's information that can be analysed. So the next stage is to take the data and to analyse that data. But before we go on, in critiquing research, how was the data collected? Would that method of collection yield valid data? How was the data recorded? Is the data presented in the research study? Again, all of these things influence the potential quality of the final result of the research project. Therefore, it's important for us to know about in our assessment of how good or bad a piece of research we're reading. Data collection, we've got the data, and analysis is the next stage. The data needs to be analysed. We analyse the data. Now, to me, this means trying to make sense of the data. Yes, this is the data, but what does the data mean? Let's convert this data into something that we understand. Into words, into graphs, into diagrams, whatever it is. But convert the raw information into something that we understand. And this analysis will lead us on to results. So the analysis leads on to results. So the next stage we're looking at results. Now after we've got results what we need to do is decide what the results mean. What do these results mean? And we need to compare the results that we get from this research study with previous research studies. How do, are these results consistent with that which has come before? Or are they inconsistent with that which has come before? Or are they showing something which is completely new? What do these results mean? And that stage we normally call the discussion stage.
So we discuss what the data means. There is a discussion of the data. And after the data has been discussed, after we've worked out where it fits in the overall picture of human knowledge in this particular field, after the discussion, well then, we can come to some kind of conclusion. We come to a conclusion, and that conclusion should relate back to the hypothesis. So if it's a hypothesis, the conclusion could be, well, in actual fact, this hypothesis was supported by the study. We conclude that the hypothesis is supported. Or alternatively, it could be no. The results of this study show that the initial hypothesis was in fact refuted. The study argue, ag argues against the uh, correctness of the hypothesis. So the hypothesis should then be accepted if there is sufficient evidence in favour of the hypothesis, or the hypothesis should be rejected if the evidence goes against the hypothesis. So, primary nursing improves patient satisfaction. Well, yes, the study does in fact show that primary nursing improves patient satisfaction. Therefore, the hypothesis is rejected. No, sorry, therefore the hypothesis is accepted. If, if it's demonstrated that patient satisfaction is improved, if it's demonstrated that patient satisfaction is improved by primary nursing, that the hypothesis is accepted. However, if the conclusion is that primary nursing does not improve patient satisfaction, then the hypothesis would be rejected. So if we say that a particular diet causes weight loss, if that is the hypothesis, and we find that it does cause weight loss, then we accept the hypothesis. If we find that this particular diet does not lead to weight loss, then we reject the hypothesis. So the hypothesis is accepted or rejected in the conclusion. And after the conclusion, we're then in a position, or the researcher is then in a position, to make recommendations. OK, we've done this study, so what? What are we going to do with this information? So the next stage, recommendations. What do I recommend? Do I recommend primary nursing? Do I recommend compression of venous leg ulcers? Do I recommend two hourly turns for patients on bed rest? Or whatever it is, whatever the research study has shown, do I recommend this or not? And finally, if you accept the recommendations, if you decide it's a good research methodology, if you accept the conclusion, if you accept the recommendations, then you would put those recommendations into practice, into what you do to benefit the lives of your patients. So the final stage after the recommendations is change in practice. if the recommendations are accepted. So I think you can see here, we've started off with a problem in the real world. And we end up with change in practice in the real world. All of the bit in between, all of this, And all of this is really part of the research process. Look at the research process carefully. If it's valid, accept the conclusions. If we put that into practice and it's good research, it's likely that the research has provided a correct rationale it's then likely that the practice is going to be correct and that means that our practice is more likely to be the right thing to do. All we can ever do is apply 
the best of current knowledge into our clinical practice. Next year, we might know more and it might change. But at the moment, all we can do is apply existing wisdom. What is known about this subject? What is the best thinking on this subject? What is the best empirical evidence that particular interventions are appropriate? Find that out and put them into practice. But you can only find that out by reading the research, critiquing the research, coming to a conclusion as to the validity of the research, and then deciding whether to put those findings into your patients' lives, into your clinical practice, or not. That is the challenge.